Hi guys, it's Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. I've got a special guest here with me, Etienne, from the house Atelier Brida Orange. We're here in Lucky Sense Scent Bar, New York City. And Etienne and I are going to talk about my favorite Atelier Brida Orange fragrances. So if you want to find out about these fragrances and hear Etienne, please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. If this is your first time tuning in and you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. Etienne, thanks so much for doing the video with me. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, Sebastian. Thank you, you very much. I'm very welcome. happy. Yes. You did a good selection. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> so this is the new scent bar, New York City, uh, in the... Uh, is it Nolita uh, neighborhood? Uh, great looking store. Beautiful place. Yeah. Beautiful place. Beautiful well, assortment also. We have a beautiful selection here also. Good selection of fragrances. And uh, you just got to New York City. And uh, tell me a little bit about the brand, Italy Brut Orange. Uh, Italy Brut Orange, so the brand, uh, we are very happy, very happy being with Lucky Scent. Italy Brut Orange was created in 2006. So it's a long ago now. It's going to be 14 years. 14 years of. Uh, what we call that uh, irreverence, yeah. 14 years of existentialism. So Italy de Range was created in 2006 in Le Marais, uh, in the district in Le Marais. We have a corner boutique. I've been. You've been to the place? Yeah. So I love being on the corner. It's a, it's a, it's, we are the crossroad of Rue des Archives and Rue Pastourelle in Le Marais. And I love, the number is cool, it's 69. So it's cool for <laughs> fantasy and erotism. But I was not that much interested by the number. I was interested by the, uh, I call that the, um, being on the border, that corner attitude of Italy d'Orange, that cutting edge spirit. So being in a corner boutique, that means that you are the crossroad on, on one side of nonsense and on the other side of the quality. Mm. So the contrast, and in French we say contre-pied. Contre-pied. I, I, I don't know if we can translate that word. Contre-pied means you pretend you go one direction and you go the other side. It's somehow a kind of a juxtaposition, contrast. I don't know the way to, to say it. But the spirit of Italy d'Orange is very much in the contre-pied. Mm. So joyful nonsense and quality and uh, sincerity and eclecticism. We, we love to oppose things. Interesting. Great, great idea. <laughs> so you launched uh, fragrances since 2006. Yes, exactly. And uh, I've selected five of my favorite fragrances here and a few others here in the background. Why don't we go ahead and start with... Uh, Herman. Herman. Herman, à mes côtés, me paraissait une ombre. Thank Herman. you for saying that, because I have a hard time saying that. Try, try to see it in French. I'm sure that you can see it very well. Herman, est à mes côtés, me côté, by my side. Herman, à mes côtés, okay. me paraissait une ombre. Yeah, okay. yeah it's, good. It's, okay. it's a good way. The best way to improve your French is to have a French lover. Okay, <laughs> I'll try that soon. <laughs> so tell me about this one. Herman à mes côtés me paraissait une ombre. So the name is Herman by my side seemed to be a shadow. And it's the French poetry. I love that perfume. It's one of the, one of the best sellers at Etalie d'Orange and it's quite funny. It's truly the formulation and, and not the name because the name is very confusing when you are not that much French. It's from Victor Hugo. It's a poem of Victor Hugo. So we love Victor Hugo. At the very beginning, Victor Hugo was very dark. He was the, the, the front runner of that dark romanticism during the 19th century. Mm -hmm. So it's truly poetry. And Quentin Biche, the perfumer, was very excited by that poem. It's a gothic poem. So, um, so maybe we can compare that poem to the Riders on the Storm of the Doors. So a, that's a little bit uh, that, that gothic attitude. And it's, it's a dark perfume. And the poem is a storytelling of two, of two riders in the forest. One is totally désespéré and, and the other one is full of hope. And that's, that's our tragedy in life, being balanced in between hope and despair. Mm. So that perfume is dark. And a blue sky on the other side. Contrast. Contrast. And, yeah. the, and, the, and, the, and the poem starts like that. À quoi songeaient les deux cavaliers dans la forêt? Herman à mes côtés me paraissait une ombre. Herman by my side seemed to be a, a shadow. Mm. So it's a kind of alternative self that you have to wear on you that can protect and put you up or down. Oh, wow. I like the idea. Yeah, a gothic perfume. Got a the... very dark romanticism. And it's definitely a Victor Hugo in a bottle. Wow. Nice, it's a great one. What are some of the notes in this one? It's a, it's a dark forest, it's full of patchouli. Mm -hmm. and That's why I like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's full of patchouli. I don't want to break down the, uh, you know, the formulation, but I love the spirit of patchouli 
and uh, and uh, woody notes. And um, you, you like that one? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So it's a good alternative self. Yeah. And so it's a bouquet of patchouli and uh, and uh, tonka beans, uh, woody notes, cedar notes, uh, sandalwood, mm. and uh, lots of good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> And it's created by Quentin Bich. Quentin Bich. Quentin Bich has a beautiful perfumery and he was very excited. I love Quentin. He did also a nice perfume with us. He did the, um, a perfume with the Marquis de Sade. Mm. Uh, the name of the perfume is Attaquer le Soleil. And I love the way Quentin reacts on, on words and literature. So I said, Quentin, I'm just about to do a perfume with the great, great grandson of Marquis de Sade. His name is Hugues de Sade. So I introduced Hugues de Sade to Quentin and I said, you can do whatever you want together. It's your playground, Quentin, please meet uh, Hugues, Hugues, please meet Quentin. Mm -hmm. But the only thing that I would like to have is the name Attaquer le Soleil as the name of the perfume, to attack the sun. Oh. That was the motto of the Marquis de Sade. He was a, a kind of Lucifer prince, mm. and, and his only motto for human beings was to attack the sun, to fight against the obscurantism. Oh, so wow. it's very modern. That's right. And Quentin is a, Quentin is a, a true poet. In the art of I like his perfumes. Yeah, he's yeah. done some good stuff. Definitely. So the next one we're going to speak about is Un Amoret. Un Amoret. Roland Moret. Roland Moret. Yeah, and Roland Moret is a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. And uh, Un Amoret, it's quite funny because you have the name Moret. Roland Moret is a fashion designer in London. He was raised in, uh, in, in the south of France and uh, he was the son of a butcher oh, wow. but he was a beautiful mind with such a talent so he said he said to his dad i don't want to stay a butcher <laughs> so he went to, Lon to london and he created his fashion house and uh, he's, he created what we call the galaxy dress the dress of victoria beckham uh, wow. and, uh, so he has a beautiful clientele from uh, scarlett johansson to victoria beckham and these uh, beautiful people uh, wears the roland moret dresses and uh, Italy d'Orange is a land of collision, so that's, the, that's, that's when you are uh, a corner boutique, you can collide. So we collide with uh, Roland Moret and he said, I want to do a perfume. He was a true fan of Tom of Finland, mm. which is another I perfume that, that we have on the, uh, that we did with the Tom of Finland Foundation. And Roland said, I'm wearing Tom of Finland, but I love the attitude because you are a perfume house with attitude. And I don't want to sign with big, big uh, perfume machines such as Lauder or whatever. I just want to create a perfume with Italie d'Orange because you created the perfume with the Charm of Finland. And, uh, and he said, I'm a, I'm a true boy of the 80s, <laughs> a kind of small town boy, yeah. moving to, uh, to, to London. And, I say, and he said, I want to, to create a perfume. So I introduced Roland Mouret to Daniela Andrier. And together they work on a beautiful iris. So it's a bouquet of iris twisted with orange blossom. Mm. And Roland, uh, Roland is a uh, beautiful mind. He was very humble. And uh, I don't know much about him, but I'll have to look him up yeah, for sure. Go and see if you are in London. You have to go and visit his uh, his, uh, his uh, uh, boutique. Okay. It is in Mayfair uh, on Carlos Place, mm. and it's a land of uh, it's a land of uh, beautiful dresses and beautiful aesthetic. He's a man with aesthetic and attitude. Okay, and it was a good uh, collision for Italy with Orange and for Daniela Andrier. Yeah, I like her too. I like her fragrances. Yeah, yeah. 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 Daniela, she Daniela beautiful. She also did uh, I Am Trash. Yeah, which I have reviewed. Yeah. <laughs> and it was fun to have Daniela to dig into the trash of Givaudan and to reprocess filtration on the rose, reprocess different filtrations in order to create a perfume connected with, with the trash and mm. to say to the people that we can reconnect with beauty from the trash. Interesting. I like that idea a lot. Yeah, I did a, I did a review of this yeah, on the yeah. channel. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. So the next one we're going to talk about is like this. this. Yeah. So, like this, another collision. It's another collision. Yeah. Tell me about the collision. Like this is a perfume that we launched in 2010. Uh, Chandler Burr, uh, uh, also a, a very high citizen of Italy, Orange, one day he called me and he said, "Oh, you have to do a perfume with Tilda Swinton." Mm. And I said, "Tilda, Tilda, the uh, the, the witch in Narnia." <laughs> and, and he said to me, uh, "She's much more than the witch in Narnia." And Tilda came at Italy Libre d'Orange and, uh, and she said, I, I don't want to, to create something massive because I was a bit scared because she was very much Hollywood. And I said, you know, we are a small perfume house, but I just want sincerity and time with a perfumer to create something very cozy, something like this. 
So the, the code name during that development was uh, Immortal Ginger. Mm. Because it's Immortal Flower Twisted with Ginger. ginger. Because Tilda is Ginger. Yeah. So we thought that it has to be a Ginger. Oh, okay. Somehow. So and, I got uh, it now. <laughs> and, uh, and at the end, instead of calling that perfume Immortal Ginger, Tim Glass said, I just want to call it like this. Because it's a poem of Rumi from the 15th century. It's mm. an, uh, an Iraqi poem. And it's a praise to the beauty of life. And... Uh, and, and she said, you know, I, I was truly involved, truly in love with that poem like this, so I want to call the perfume like this. And we have had a Fifi in 2011 with that creation oh, wow. in France. That's awesome. Like this. So if you like, if you like an immortal flower twisted with ginger and vetiver. Vetiver. And vetiver. That's the input of the Yeah, full pumpkin. of pumpkin. Yeah. <laughs> we love, you know, uh, what do you call that? Reddish. Yeah. Reddish hair. Yeah. It's, yeah, like this. And uh, it's a perfect for autumn. Fall. Exactly. Yeah, it's exactly. a great fragrance. Yeah, it's a good Halloween perfume. Somehow. Halloween, yeah. But frankly, the best Halloween perfume could be uh, could be that gothic creation of the 19th century. Really? Romanticism. So uh -huh. Anyway, we all year long, yeah, man. But it, you're right. It's very pumpkin also inside. Yeah, there's lots of pumpkin. Cool. So that's number three. And then uh, we also have Fat Electrician, hey. my second favorite. Well, second favorite. <laughs> this one's a great one. It's like a gourmand vetiver, right? Yeah, it's a kind of sweet, greasy vetiver. A vetiver, a slightly a vintage vetiver from the uh, from the, the, the 70s, the 80s. That was the idea with Antoine Maison Dieu, the perfumer. And Fat Electrician, the name is cool. It's a, it's a true story. Um, and I've I met, heard the story from you. You've heard, you've heard your the story? former associate, Thomas. Yeah, he told Thomas, me Thomas. In, in the store. Yeah, I met uh, long ago when I was developing Tom of Finland. I met in New York. Um, uh, James Bigood he was the you know the filmmaker of uh, Pink Narcissus because I thought that Pink Narcissus would have been a beautiful name for a perfume mm -hmm. and, I, and I you know a friend of mine taught me about the story of that film during the uh, late 60s so um, uh, James Bigood met Bobby Kendall he was was some uh, a guy, he was his lover they met on Times Square mm. he was more or less a kind of uh, hustler I do not know exactly <laughs> and, but they met they felt in love and they created that film together he was a beautiful prototype of beauty Bobby Kendall mm. and I met James it good he was something 85 at that time and I said hey James Bobby is still alive and uh, is, he, uh, is he somewhere in the US and he said oh Bobby is nothing else now than a fat electrician in New Jersey oh and, and I thought that it was a beautiful... That's the know, story. Yeah, that's the story. That's the, we call it the curse of beauty. And uh, the curse of beauty. Uh, so instead of calling Pic Narcissus, because he was not, you know, the owner of that name, because the film, and it was Warner, I don't remember. So we said, let's call it Fat Electrician. That's the, uh, you know, the tragedy of life and the beauty of life. Yeah. You can be a beautiful guy. You can capitalize on your beauty or do nothing from your beauty. You don't mind the pathway. Enjoy yep. the journey. Absolutely. The curse of beauty and enjoy the, the journey. Exactly. So this one has lots of vetiver. It has whipping cream. Is that yeah, correct? Exactly. Or yeah. chestnut, chestnut cream. Chestnut cream. And then vetiver. Vetiver. Lots it's, of vetiver. Yeah, it's a strong bouquet of vetiver. Vetiver from Haiti. Haiti. And uh, slightly milky. A little milky, and, yeah. yeah. There's an olive note in here too. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know the formulation. Yeah, right? I know the notes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's fat electrician, yeah. guys. Fat electrician. And and you can go on the on our website. Of, um, a guy wrote me an email. He said, you know, the story of my life is fat electrician. He said I was a, I was a hero in uh, and you can go and see the film. I was a hero in uh, foot, American football. Then I had a knee injury and and then the football handed. Uh, and he had, he had a two times a divorce and too many meals, too many kids. Oh. And that's the story of his life. And he said, but everything at the end, at the end you know, my, my pathway of life is very much your fat electrician. Uh, oh, wow. And, and the voice. And I said, put me, please read the, the email and give me the, give me the OK to go to put your audio voice filming the bottle because it's so beautiful the, the, the your pathway in life is very much that fat electrician creation mm -hmm. so uh, anyway interesting it's anecdotic but it was beautiful yeah that's okay. the poetry of Italie d'Orange the poetry of Italie d'Orange is a joyful nonsense sabotage mm -hmm. and the spirit of Italie d'Orange is when you feel very down to protect yourself before committing suicide is angel frivolity and a little spray of Italie d'Orange on your skin yeah <laughs> sounds great 
Especially with this, not that much commercial yeah. to pretend so, but yeah. The, the, the first fragrance, my number one favorite from this house, is nothing groundbreaking, but it's such a great fragrance to wear. You or someone like you. Yeah. I just really love the mint in here. It's mint, right? Yeah, mint and just a garden rose. Yeah, a garden rose. But yeah, it, it, it's a beautiful blossom of, of mint. Mint, yeah. And you did this in collaboration with Chandler. Chandler, for, yeah. Chandler was the muse of the perfumer, Caroline Sabas. And together they spent time based on the novel of Chandler Burr. Mm. He, he, he wrote that book, You or Someone Like You. It's a beautiful novel of some, some who a love affair in Los Angeles. And long ago, something like six, seven years ago, I said to Chandler, you know, your, the name of your novel is absolutely fantastic. Instead of staying a critic, come the other side and do a perfume with us mm. because I love the name. You spend your time with Caroline Sabas. You, you, you talk about you know, your vision of Los Angeles and possibility in the blue sky. Mm. That's the mantra of Los Angeles. And uh, or possibility in the blue air. And, and I said, go spend your time, but I want the name of the perfume to be you or someone like you. Mm -hmm. That's the cycle of, of, of love life. You know, when you are truly in love, so you have a... You, Great name too. Yeah, yeah right. it's a, truly a singularity. But then when you break up, and um, two or three years later, you know, the, the, the lover is nothing else than, uh, than something universal, is you know, someone like you. Someone like you, yeah. yeah this is a, why I like this is because I grew up with mint. Uh, mm -hmm. My family loves mint. We eat it, drink it, everything. And it's very authentic. The mint smells true, like, yeah. like real mint. When you chop it and you take a smell, you smell that hair. Mm -hmm. That's, That's why I like it. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, it is a very sincere creation, like the rest of the of the range. But it was just a just an encounter in between a, a fantastic guy and a fantastic perfumer, and uh, and sincerity into a into a natural spray. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's awesome. I love it. It's perfect for the the summer. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah it's true. Very fresh. It's it's one of so it's very uh, very demanded in Paris. You are someone like you. Mm. And the name is cool. And the name is very cool. Yeah, I love that. I love that mantra. Chandler is a, is a talented writer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, nice. he's a beautiful mind. I, I follow him on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> so we have a couple more to just quickly discuss uh, about Jasminette cigarettes. Jasmine Tell me a little bit about this one. It's an oxymor. That, that could be the perfume of uh, Greta Garbo, Marlene Dietrich. Mm. That's uh, when you can seduce people uh, in a twilight atmosphere with the with that uh, gestuelle of, of a woman smoking tobacco at a cigarette at the bar of a grand hotel. I get it, yeah. So it's very much, you know, that kind of twilight seduction because in the grey, everything becomes possible. Mm. And I love the oxymor of, a, of an absolute of jasmine twisted with tobacco, twisted with a cigarette. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's one of the first creations of Italy Bode Orange. And the name, is, the name is beautiful, Creation of Antoine Maison Dieu. So it's the, you can think about Greta Garbo, Marlene Dietrich, or Jane Birkin. And uh, that, does, that image does come to yeah, mind, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We say in French, clair obscur. Mm. Clair obscur, it's, it's a gray, uh, all call that. Uh, it's uh, clair obscur. I think that you can understand the meaning of it. And uh, so this perfume is for clair obscur seduction. Okay, very interesting. Cool, I like it. This next one is Remar Remarkable People. It's a sparkling creation. It's a praise to uh, Josephine Baker, the cabaret dancer. Josephine was a fantastic, um, uh, beautiful mind once again of the 20th century in French. She was a cabaret dancer. And she was on one side panache and on the other side generosity. Mm -hmm. So this perfume is panache and generosity to praise the, uh, the pathway in life of Josephine Baker. She was amazing on stage. She was a front runner of of a, a strong artistic movement you know, mm. during, during the, uh, the, uh, the first half of the 20th century. She was a war hero also uh, of the Second World War. Yeah. And I thought that it was nice to create a perfume based on Josephine Baker. She was a remarkable people, but everybody, we, we are always remarkable people. Mm -hmm. So it's for, uh, for all the sparkling minds. Interesting. Yeah, I like this and I like Josephine Baker. I, I really I like her. Because you like champagne or so. Oh yeah, I like champagne, champagne on ice. I had some last <laughs> night. <laughs> it's a very positive, hedonist, joyful perfume. Really? You wear it and you just smile. It's so a it's happy. A happy perfume. Yeah. yeah. I love it. And she was an happy person. person really? Yeah. Very happy person. Very positive. She, she had something like 12 children. I've been to her castle in yeah. France. Yeah, you There's a castle in, uh, is it the Dordogne region? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. 
I've been. So I, I like her. I'm a fan yeah. of hers. Josephine Baker, panache and generosity. Mm, interesting. Do you say panache in English? Yes, panache. Yeah. Yeah. You've got panache. Yeah. You're a bit confused, huh? Yeah. Slightly jet lag. No, <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Um, so lastly, we did touch on this a little bit. Um, I tell me a little bit more about this one. It's recycled yeah, readings. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so I wrote that concept long ago because it's not ecology. Mm. It's not ecology because we are polluting with the cap, with the glass and everything. That's the poetry of the trash. And long ago, during in the 80s, I was raised in New Caledonia, and I was uh, very much, uh, very much into ecology of the South Pacific and the uh, and the and the ocean. So I said to myself, we have to do something with Italie de Orange and to tell the world to react on trash. And I said, what could be the poetry of the trash? And I said, let's dig into the trash of Givaudan mm -hmm. and 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 see what's going on, what what we can clean and reprocess distillation and tell the world that. Uh, from trash, we can reconnect with beauty. Mm. And Daniela Andrié, she was very much in, in love with that idea. So um, the, the good baseline in the US that we use is when the world becomes filthy, might as well wear it. Oh. No, but, <laughs> and I am trash. The, 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 the very beginning of the concept was les fleurs du déchet. Les fleurs du déchet means, you know, flowers of, of trash. Oh. And I am trash. And the most wanted scent made from the unwanted. So we went into rose. We have reprocessed the filtration of rose flakes. It was supposed to be trashed. We did the same with sandalwood flakes. We did the same with cedar wood. Mm. We did the, we've selected something like 14 ingredients. And Daniela, uh, uh, Daniela spent a lot of time. And it was a nightmare to reprocess the ingredients. Oh, wow. And the cost of that, of that formulation is, is quite crazy nice. because when you have to reprocess and clean the, the ingredients but at the end of the day the poetry of the trash to say to the world that we have to go to the alma mater in French alma mater in Latin it means la mer nourricière mm. so it's a, a beautiful modern perfume because we reprocess the trash so it's the first 20, 21st century modern perfume interesting you know yeah great idea and you have some of the best names in perfumes yeah. love the names <laughs> that's, that's the uh, that's very much Italie d'Orange. We are uh, at the end. We are a perfume house, but at the very beginning, it's it's existentialism. My mother and my grandmother, they were literature teacher, mm. and and they taught me that notion of existentialism. And they were Latin and Greek teacher. And within the root, to exist means to exit yourself from from the groove. And 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 the very notion of existentialism is mostly to walk the road the less traveled. And at Italie d'Orange, we are a machine of existentialism. Interesting. And we are not that much a, a, a perfume house. At the end, as a beautiful consequence of existentialism, we turn to be a perfume house because we need minimum economy of it. But the very beginning, the, the true root of Italie d'Orange is existentialism. If you want to feel yourself alive, if you want to exist, you have to take yourself out of the groove. That's the existentialism. So Italie d'Orange is a perfume house on the road, on the road the less traveled of, uh, of the industry and and, uh, and we don't mind that much about the formulation because it's going to be beautiful because the very beginning is a poetry of Victor Hugo is a poetry of the trash is a beautiful poetry of, uh, of uh, a fat electrician in Newton Times Square and uh, so we are, uh, we are a bit distance in between a comedy and a tragedy very nice, nicely put Thank you. thank you, thank you, thank you. Guys, uh, thank you so much for watching this video with Etienne from the House of Italian Orange. Um, if you have any questions or comments, do list below. Are you a fan of this house? And if you are, let me know what your favorite fragrances are. Put some comments down so we can find out. If you are in New York City, please stop by at the new uh, scent bar, uh, Lucky Scent Scent Bar in Nolita on Elizabeth Street. But thanks so much for watching. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Uh -huh.